Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around it. One of the factions that we haven't really looked into in this season is the Northern Realms, and today we're going to do exactly that with the Coincidental deck. You might be wondering, did he just pronounce Coincidental just completely wrong? No, I didn't, because uh, this deck is going to revolve around using Cohen, the new one of the new Witcher cards in this latest expansion to his full effect. So Cohen, I'm going to focus on him first because basically he's the crux of this deck or maybe the thing that makes this deck a little bit special. So on an order ability, he boosts all other units with power equal to his own power by the amount he is boosted. What that means is that, for example, he starts at 3 power. If you boost him to 5, he is boosted by 2. At that point, if you use his order ability, all other units that are uh, at 5 power, including your opponents, by the way, which is very, very important, will also be boosted by 2, which could um, result in a huge point potential with this card. So the same goes for when you go to 6, every other 6 powered unit will be boosted, to, boosted by 3, 7 it will be boosted by 4. So this card can be extremely powerful if played correctly and because of that I kind of went with a combination of the new Griffin uh, Witcher student archetype, so the Swarm Witcher archetype combined with a more basic boosting package. So we're using Uprising as our leader ability, which allows us to boost an allied unit by one three times and then spawn a Lady Incitement, giving you at least three charges of one single boost that you could use to put those older units on your field to the same power as Cohen. And then the uh, Lady Incitement will, could technically also be that same power, but usually it's gonna go way over that because uh, this deck is full of boosts. So let's go through the deck as we usually do from the bottom to the top. So first up in the, uh, well, the sense of boosting, we want to have a Rat of its Royal Guards, basically a very good opening play where you play him on the range row and then boost your next unit by two when you're allowed to. And then the crux of this, um, well, the swarm side of this deck, so the Griffin Witcher Adepts, not the students, I kind of mis mispronounced that before. So the Griffin Witcher Adept has a shield and on order he can uh, transform an allied Witcher into a base copy of the Griffin Witcher adapt so allowing you to transform uh, basically the two power students we're going to use that the most for into a four power griffin witcher adept you could also transform some of the other witchers in this deck but the adepts uh, the students will be the best targets for this then a squirrel just of course because my logo is a squirrel no it's because it's a very useful card uh, if you have four provisions left that you need to fill and allows you to banish a card from your opponent's graveyard and that is exactly what we're going to be using it for for getting rid of annoying deathwish cards that stay in the deck uh, in the graveyard getting rid of something like a colcrum that you managed to destroy although the um yeah, there's not too many removal options in this deck, but still it could be possible. Uh, or of course getting rid of Echo cards, which will use it for the most. So like Onegomancy um, and any Echo card you might come up with. Then the boost package is also includes a few Tridem infantry units. So whenever these guys are boosted, they will damage or random any uni unit by one, which of course gels very well with Uprising as a base and some of the other cards as well. Then target practice, the new warfare card, boost an allied unit by four. And if that row also has a Witcher, you spawn a Witcher student on that row, which you can then transform into a Witcher adept if you have one on the board. Rune Word is basically just a little bit of vitality and a shield that you can use to protect one of your uh, more engine type units. Then two Tremerian Drummers, of course, for the boost package. Boost the unit to the right by one at the end of every one of your turns. And then the new Griffin Witchers, allowing you every turn to damage an enemy unit by one. And if you have Adrenaline Tree, it will damage a random enemy unit by three and lock itself. If you can veil it, um, this will keep doing that for the last four turns. So, which is why, also why we have Crystal Skull here instead of the Tactical Advantage, because that gives you veil. Play one of those Griffin Witchers and you can veil it immediately and have a nice engine on the board in one go. Boiling Oil is basically the only removal option here. Um, then we have Selective Mutation, a very interesting, like, adrenaline card tutor. 
Um, you can draw an adrenaline card of your choice and then shuffle one of the other cards in your hand back to your deck so you remain with the same amount of cards. But then you also spawn a Witcher student on each allied row, giving you two more targets for your adept to transform. So if you have an adept on the field, this will be six points uh, just in general, but also function as a tutor to get uh, one of your stronger cards in your hand. Then the reinforcements is mostly used to get another adept if one of your adepts is locked so that you can continue your swarm. Cohen we just talked about, I'm not going to continue, well, re-explain that. You'll see that in a minute in the example match. Alastranger, always a very powerful option in a boost-related deck. So put that between the Tridem Infantry unit and a Drummer, and she will get boosted immediately and then boost the two units right next to her at the end of the turn. Uh, Voimir. Voimir is in this deck because, of course, we're using a Swarm deck, well, the Swarm archetype, and Voimir allows you to boost an allied unit and all of its copies by one and give him one armor. So that's just gonna basically level up all your adepts to another power level. And since we're trying to combine them with Cohen, that just basically levels up your entire board. Because um, if you manage to get Cohen to, because the adepts start at four, if you play Voimir, all the adepts go to five. If you then get Cohen to five as well, all those adepts will be boosted up to seven, which is very, very strong indeed. And that's not the end of that combo, because of course Fizukota is also in this deck. Um, High provision, so eight uh, provisions for only three power, but it gives you the ability to boost the unit by one and he will gain a charge every time any of the players plays a card. Even if you play two cards in a row, like for example with Queen Adalia that we can do, um, you get an extra charge. So even though it's only four points as a start, this can snowball really, really quickly. One of the most powerful cards in Northern Realms to my mind. Then we get Keldar, another one of the new cards. So if you are at Adrenaline Force, you only have four cards in your hand, he will automatically spawn a Witcher student in the row he is in by the end of the turn. And every time you play a Warfare card, he'll spawn another Witcher student in this row. This could result in a lot of, uh, well, a quickly filled row, so keep that in mind. So try to place him in the uh, least filled row, uh, but is a very good engine to just fuel your adepts with extra students in that final round. Then Donomir, of course, the best defender in the game, uh, giving you seven power. Uh, I think it's four armor. Uh, no, two armor and a shield. So that's very a lot of things that your opponent needs to go through. Of course, with a simple purify, it's gone or a destroy effect. But still, one of the stronger de defenders, really hard to get rid of. And we can use that mainly to defend Visigota. Because again, Visigota has a very low base power. So it could be destroyed really, really quickly. And Queen Adalia, another way to get one of the adepts on the field. Uh, the shield goes away at that point because, of course, adepts already have a shield. But you could also use it to get any of the other bronze cards on the field if you want to. Just try to see what you need at that point. And then Erland of Larvik, the strongest new addition to the Northern Realms package. Uh, on deploy, you boost all your units in your deck by one. So I try to do this as early as possible because that gives you a boosted deck. Um, and his other ability is that if you use his order ability, you remove all the boosts from all the units in your deck and then boost himself by those boosts. That could be a nice finisher to mainly round one, because round two you won't have that many cards in your deck left. Um, but round one, this could be very powerful, but most of the time I use him as a sort of extreme carryover card. So you play him in round one, and then everything you draw in round two and round three will be boosted by one. So giving you at least six extra points or even more if you get your mulligans right. And then last but not least, something that also um, gels very well with the fact that we have Erland in there as a sort of carryover ability. We have both Amphibious Assault and On Aeromancy, giving you very, very strong consistency in this deck. So you will be able to draw any card you want, and most importantly, Amphibious Assault in this deck also allows you to pull Cohen at 5 power immediately. You don't need to boost Cohen to 5 anymore. He will be 5 automatically. And if you've used Erland before that, you will even boost him to 6. So you most likely will not need to boost Cohen anymore. You just have to focus on your other units, getting them to 6 as well. And then just spread those boosts across the entire board. And then Onerimatsi, of course, does the, uh, well, almost the same thing. You can pull any card 
um, but don't boost those cards, of course. But you could also use Onerimancy to get Amphibious Assault if you haven't gotten Amphibious Assault yet and you want that extra boost. Uh, and then in the last round, you have both of them to play again. So very, very consistent deck on that front. But uh, that's enough of me babbling. Let's go into an example match. Okay, and we get Nilfgaard, an Assimilate deck. That's gonna be pretty interesting. Because, yeah, in combination with what we like to play with, I do need to be careful with this, because they can, of course, pull cards from our deck. Uh, we don't start, so we don't have the Veil option. Let's get rid of that Gripen Witcher. Um, we don't have any of our tutors. The Banish is going to be useful, I'm assuming. Um... But other than that, we don't generate too many of those uh, witches just yet. So let's get... Okay, something happened. Okay, first play is Portal. They're gonna get a lot of Assimilate out of that. Um, oh, let's just play the Griffin Witcher first. He's gonna generate a few points for us. And then we can see what happens next. If they have some removal in their hands, they'll probably go for that. And then just slowly build this up. Let's start with the Griffin. Because the Griffin Witcher gives us some damage output. Um, even though this deck is pretty light on uh, damage output regardless. Let's play uh, Queen Adalia next. Because she can actually duplicate the drummer. And give that a shield. And then put that on the uh, Griffin Witcher. And let's just start laying into that... Um, yeah, that soldier over there, the, uh, the Ducal Guard. And then we get a Slave Hunter. That will do. And of course, what we're gonna do is put the Tridem Infantry. Hmm. Could put another drummer in between here. So let's just do double drummer first. And keep focusing on that Assimilate unit in the back. And that gives us a bit of uh, engine potential right here. Just trying to show off that combination of having some some sweet, sweet boosting going on. And then we get Arturius probably on yeah, the Duchess Informant, triggering Assimilate once and then triggering Assimilate again because of the fact that the uh, Griffin Witcher will be played again, I'm guessing. No, the drummer. So that's double Assimilate on all of those. Um, let's just... Continue playing this slow. I can put the Trident Infantry unit in between here. Um, and continue damaging yeah, the Ducal Guard. Doesn't really matter at this point. Because that still gives us about status, two boosts. Okay, yeah, that was to be expected. And we get a Trident Infantry unit right next and it stole our combo basically. Let's put Anna Strenger in between that then. Uh, just so we can have some more benefit from all that boosting. Um, but other than that, oh, I could try and take out the drumming now. But I feel like they, they kind of outplayed us here. We still generate about 4 points every turn, but it's not going to be enough to outplay them. And we get damage of course now, and Coup de Grasse. Has been buffed. I don't know why it's been buffed, because it's too strong now. Coup de Gras is way too strong now. Um, and they play Anna as well. So they basically just stole our combo. Fine, fair enough. Um, that is, yeah, everything I can do in this, uh, in this round. So let's just pass there. And there we go. The first round is gone. That is too bad, but... Ah, we could have used the scroll, yeah. We could have used the squirrel to take out Coup de Grasse, but we would have been uh, down uh, one card at that point. So it wouldn't have been good. Um, let's get rid of the squirrel now then, because we're not going to see that again. Uh, Double Witcher Adept might actually not be that bad. Although I want to keep that Tridem Infantry unit, um, and that's Kaldar. And again, none of the tutors. So that means we still have a lot of special cards in our hands, so playing Erland now... It's not that beneficial. Because um, our entire hand is units. Yeah, Erland didn't really give us anything. I mean, I can play him now just to have... Uh, 
a bit of um, carryover, but it's 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 everything that we can do. Just playing him now seems like the best option. Otherwise, we're just wasting cards. And we can swap out a few of the cards in our hands with the cards that we're gonna get. And if we get tutors, even better. Um, that's not gonna be one that. Yeah. Okay. So we get one tutor at least. Um, the targeting practice is good. The fact that Cohen is now there is not that good, but something that we'll have to deal with. I think, yeah, let's get rid of target practice. Selective mutation. I'm going to have to see if there are any adrenaline units left. There is one, so I run the risk of now pulling that. Uh, but I'm going to have to because the squirrel is useless at this point. And we get boiling oil instead. Okay. 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 Uh, we're going to... Probably gonna get purifies. Let's just start with Radovitz Royal Guards as a slow first play. We have a full hand, uh, so it's not gonna matter all that much if we start out slow. We get Glynis first. And again, I don't have any removal in this deck, so it's just uh, trying to build up our own side of the field. So let's play uh, Donimir. He's probably gonna get purified. But nevertheless, it's something that we really need to try. And then we get the Griffin Witcher resurrected from my graveyard. It's not the best thing that they could have done probably, but let's play Visogota and boost him and give him some armor with Radovitz Royal Guards. And let's get those charges going because we need those charges in a minute. Uh, we're also gonna put our Griffin Witcher Adept ready. On the range row, because unlike other swarm decks, the starting the, the place that you put your first swarm unit doesn't really matter because you can just swap out the uh Okay, so we get damage there. You can swap out the, the rows where you place those students, so it's not that much of a problem. So we get damaged on Viso Good uh on uh, Donimir. Um I think that kind of means that our opponent doesn't really have an option to take that out. So let's just put the Adept over there. I'm going to use one Uprising Charge on Donimir and then just use three charges from Visogota on uh, Donimir as well. So let's just end it there. So with Adrenaline, we're going to pull another uh, Griffin Witcher and we need to put a card away. Probably gonna put away the Tridem infantry unit then. And we get the stone, the Nilfgaard stone, the rune stone, and we're getting Seditious Aristocrat. So that's just for spying units. We don't have spying units yet. So that's gonna have to see. Okay. Now, uh, we need to play a Selective Mutation first so we can draw a card with Adrenaline. It's gonna be the Griffin Witcher. And I'm gonna get rid of the Tridem infantry unit just so we have all Witchers. And then we can, of course, change one of the uh, students into an, another Adept. Um, and that is going to be it for now. I could boost Donomir one more time to 8. Because we kind of know that he can't really be taken out there. So that's good for now. Next up is going to be Keldar. And I think I might even play... Um, Okay, so we get, yeah, we get on Aeromancy from my hand. And with that, they can play whatever card they want. So if they have Vincent from Morlehem, they might actually be able to destroy... Ooh. Okay, we get one spying unit, Roderick of Duntine. And then we get, okay, Bradens. Actually, funny. So they purposefully played Bradens like that. And we get the Duchess Informants again, so that's another spying unit. And a Witcher student because it's the only bronze guard. But look at the charges we get from uh, on, on Visogota there. Okay, I'm gonna have to play this quickly because now we get all. Um, I still have a Boiling Oil as well. But we need to play Kaldar first. Uh, Kaldar needs to go on the board as quickly as possible. We can transform that student again and from now on we'll be getting more uh, students every turn. Fizogota is annoying that he's... Yeah, we have a lot of charges on him. 
and we're gonna have to be using those in a minute but the problem is that there's two units with six on the other side of the board now there's plenty of charges for us to use but we're gonna have to be careful so now we get Joachim Joachim is most likely gonna be able to kill uh, yeah we're gonna yeah we're gonna get killed here no not actually so we get one poison but not a second one we don't get a second poison yet which is good it basically is delaying the inevitable for us, but we know there's another coup de grace incoming. Uh, we have 12 charges on Visogota now. So I think I'm gonna have to do this quickly, by the way. Um, so I could put I could put Cohen down. Cohen should be going up to um, I think five. Five is gonna be the best, because I can then boost everything up to five. Please don't give me the timer yet. 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 Uh, so Cohen is at five. And that is also at five. And then we're gonna get... Uh, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter all that much. And then play that. Play that. Play that somewhere. Yeah, okay. We're gonna have to do it now. Whew. Okay, that's the end of that. <laughs> So that's what happens if you play Cone. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It worked like a charm. That was great. Okay. Wow, that was really close, by the way. On uh, timer-wise. We got a lot of points there. And it might have been a bit too soon, but we're going to get poisoned now on uh, Donimir. And I didn't want to risk getting destroyed there. Uh, we get another Slave Hunter. I don't think we might even win this, because even after that, our opponent seems to be doing better than us. Um, what else do we still have in the deck, by the way? We still have Voimir as well, so that's going to be my final play. I could probably... Um, yeah, let's play the Griffin Witcher now. Although, no. He's going to have to go on the melee row, and I don't even want to do that right now. So let's just transform another Witcher student. Play boiling oil on whatever the hell, because I don't really care about that at the moment. And then start boosting. Yeah, just start using those those charges. Uh, not on the student, of course, because we don't want to. Oh, that was a bit too high. <laughs> I don't want to boost that one. He's at 15 already. So if we get another destroy, another poison there, that's going to be really bad. And we get another Duchess informant. And they're actually filling up our row rather nicely. So... We're gonna transform that student, of course. But now we're not gonna get any students anymore. Uh, Voimir is gonna be better at this point. How many Adepts do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we play on Aeromancy... Um, on Voimir... We actually get this. And then on the Adept... There we go, and we get four more charges on Visogota, so let's just put that on the Duchess Informant, I guess. And there we go. So if they play another Duchess Informant, we can't play our last card, which is exactly what's going to happen. I'm guessing. So we get Tristelekinesis, and they get Experimental Remedy, going to pull another Duchess Informant, and our rows are full. So the only thing that we're going to be able to do is play some more... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's gonna be really good, yeah. We lost we lost the game, but I think it's a really good game to show you what we could do with this thing. Um, so let's just boost everything here. I could actually transform another unit, but that's not gonna help us much. So even... We could have played our last card, um, so our board is full. So let's just do this. And we can't transform anything. It's not gonna help us. We can, but it's not gonna help us. So that's... I mean, it did show how big this deck can become. It was really close with the timing there, so I hope that was enough to show you uh, what this deck is capable of. We sadly lost, but still, it's a really, really fun deck to play with, as you saw. The combo with Cohen is really, really cool. So if I had gotten a little bit more lucky with when I played Erland, or I should have just played him sooner, uh, I would have actually won that 
closely, I guess. But yeah, against the Simulate, uh, since I don't really have a lot of removal, they kind of had the upper hand. But uh, still, I think we managed okay. So this is, again, the deck. You can check it out. The link to the deck guide is also in the description. You can check it out over there. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it because it's a really, really fun game, uh, fun uh, deck to play with. Even though it's not one of the most powerful decks, if your opponent doesn't have too much removal, um, this can still be a very powerful deck. But that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide on the Coincidal deck. Because, uh, yeah, kind of went with uh, the word place over there. But really, really like this deck. Even though it's not the most powerful deck in the world. It's a good deck to end the season with, I feel like. Uh, next month, we're not going to get any balance changes. So this deck will still be kind of viable in the next month as well. As are all the other decks that we discussed this month. And uh, yeah, that's it for this season for me. Hope to see you guys in the next season. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Gwentech, where we'll check out another amazing deck to play with. Thank you guys so much for watching. And goodbye. Stay nutty.